Take our scripture reading this morning from Luke chapter 16. And Elaine and I, we wear our mask because we have a three month old uh, grandbaby and we want to make sure we keep her safe. Especially when RSV and all that stuff is up right now. So, But this morning, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my face mask off so you can see my face at least once, all right? <laughs> there you go. Put it back on, right? <laughs> Luke chapter 16, verse, starting at verse number 1. I'm reading from a New Revised Standard Version. Luke 16, starting at 1, reading at 13. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summons him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking my position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do. Uh, I have decided what to do that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, One hundred jugs of olive. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he answered another, And how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master com commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of his <clears throat> this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a li very little is faithful also in much. And wh whoever is dishonest is very little... D dishonest in a very little is dishonest as also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to uh, to who will entrust to you the rich true riches? And if you have not been faithful, what with what belongings with what belongs to another? Who will give you what is your uh, is your own? No slave can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate one master and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Now, that's about as confusing a parable, I guess, as we could read, isn't it? It, uh, it really is. And because, you know, according to that, what I picked up on that is, you know, we should gain our wealth and, and dishonest means and it'll be all right. And then what you picked up, that's not what it's meaning, folks, all right? As a matter of fact, this particular parable, it's hard to get exactly what the gist of it is and, uh, you know, what Christ was trying to say to us. And, and some theologians and scholars believe that uh, the translation was, uh, the, the message was all sort of lost in the translation uh, because of the style and the grammar. And I'm sure that, Andrea, you're an English teacher, right? Uh, if you get this, the wrong structure or words in the sentence, then it doesn't make a bit of sense, does it? That's right. Just ask me. Just listen to me talk and you understand. <laughs> While others just read it uh, for what it is and often gets a jumbled mess in its true meaning because it is a difficult parable. And today we're going to talk about this parable while, but we're particularly going to talk about just a little piece of it toward the end, okay? And you know what one that is, but you can't search two masters, all right? Because that's the only thing I can understand, right? No. <laughs> That's all we're going to talk about today, all right? So uh, how many of you uh, uh, have wondered what's happened to our society this day? Oh, yeah. Always. It's the most hateful bunch of people I've ever seen. And, and uh, uh, you know, I say that I've seen, but I'm probably in the mix also. I don't know about you. don't mean to be. You know, uh, uh, anymore, uh, every, almost every day you see on a plane where somebody gets crazy on there and there's fights and uh, insults and strikes and stuff like that. And uh, people are killing people. I think it was last weekend there was, uh, I forget how many mass shootings there was over the weekend. There was 213 some 213 people or something like that that, that were injured or killed just last weekend. 
society is just it seems like the, the crimes are of greater proportion than they've ever been before and people are taking a, uh, uh, advantage of the disadvantage and and uh, uh, no one seems to care about anyone but themselves can we all agree with that Amen. and this is I think is a big change from when I was a child when, when I was a child it seemed we really didn't have a whole lot you know we wore hand-me-downs and and we was okay with that we had a, a set of good clothes church clothes and school clothes and we had what we call dirty clothes which is our work clothes and uh, immediately after we turned home we were supposed to get in those and that's what we did our chores with I, I grew up on a farm my grandparents and, and we worked pretty hard and uh, uh, you know when our neighbor you know or someone was in genuine need then even though we didn't have a whole lot we still tried to help them out and uh, because it was a neighborly thing to do and, and but over the years it seems like things have changed quite a bit that you know people could care less about other people not all people I'm not talking about everybody but you understand what I'm saying and uh, today it seems the more a person has the more they want and uh, 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 this could be an after effect of the Great Depression, but I, I don't think there's a whole lot of people or anybody in here uh, that was uh, alive during the Great Depression. I don't think so. I don't see anybody in here, I don't believe. We may have caught the tail end of it, you know, but, but, but you know what? The, the ramifications or the memories of that depression is sort of carried over, bled over in the other generations because, you know, I don't know if you heard me talk about my grandmother, but she would, uh, if she got bread at the store, she would wash the bags out and hang them, and she would keep them. She didn't throw nothing away. Mm -hmm. Aluminum foil, she would wipe it off and reuse it, uh, you know, I guess because uh, they experienced that. But at a... Uh, 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 you know, during the Great Depression, we, we, we've all read about it, and you had to scrimp and save in order to make it uh, through life. And, and uh, I, I believe that it's, you know, that's the reason some people today, not our kids, because when our kids were kids, they say, it's only $20. I'm like, $20? <laughs> and uh, because they don't have a grasp of what that's actually like, okay? And uh, uh, it seems that people just place more emphasis today on materialistic things instead of spiritual things. And uh, uh, if you read over in Jeremiah, it, it, we can read where the prophet was mourning for the people because they were in desolate times or whatever it was. And, and uh, the people were battered. They were broken. And, and, uh, 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 and the prophet cried, Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? And uh, uh, then he makes reference to you know how the harvest has passed and, and uh, uh, summer has ended. And, and, and I think each one of us in here, I think I'm looking around the room and everyone in here has lived through at least a summer and a fall into winter. I don't believe anybody in here is younger than that. So, you know, we, we, we can relate to that to know that, you know, summer is sort of a fruitful time except, you know, when there's drought like it is out west or something like that. But, you know, we have flowers blooming. We have crops growing. Uh, you know, uh, later on this year, we'll be picking tomatoes off the vine and cucumbers and stuff like that. And then later in the fall, we'll be picking apples and stuff like that and pears. But there comes a time in uh, uh, those seasons where the harvest is done. And in the winter, you're not going to harvest much except snowballs and icicles. And not very many of those anymore. <laughs> Because we just don't have that kind of weather. So the Israelites they had, uh, had a time when they prospered very much because God was number one in their life, okay? And uh, uh, that's why God made them prosper. But, you know, uh, we sometimes fail to realize that God made them prosper because uh, uh, they uh, had placed, well, they placed God first in their life, okay? Now, where they got in trouble is when they turned their back on God. They got caught up in what they had and what they wanted and what they wanted to accomplish. And they started saying, look what I did. Look what I did. Look what I did. Oh, yeah. And they forgot about God. They left God out of the picture. So God had turned his back on them because God is a jealous God. Amen. Amen. If you don't put God first, then mercy day. And you would think that the Israelites would, would have known better. After all, they observed first-handedly what God had done for them. 
and what God had done prior to them, that, them living at that time, okay? So for us, it's more difficult today because we just can't see anything firsthandly what God does, right? We can't see anything that God does firsthandly, right? Y'all should be going, shaking me no or shout me down. No way, no way. All right. Uh, uh, our answer should be a great big no, because if you look, you can see the presence of God and he is still working in the world today. Amen. God is performing miracles. Amen. God is working in the world. Amen? Amen. If you don't believe me, I want you to drive down to where Nate Hager is today and he'll tell you that God is working as his new. He adjusts to his new lungs that he has in his body. That's a miracle, folks. It really is. And, and speaking of that, we do need to keep continue to pray for them. And we also need to pray for the family where those lungs come from because someone is genuinely hurting today. Amen? So it's easy for us to get caught up in the things that we see and we hold. And as the saying goes, the bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. <laughs> That's what the saying is. Yeah, that's what and this is an old proverb that means it's better to have the lesser, but but a, a certain advantage and the possibility of a greater one that may come to nothing at all. Many people believe this old saying, and, and they think that uh, 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 they will store up goods and money. And, uh, uh, you know, there's several scriptures in the Bible about doing that. And they, they, they believe that they're out for number one, the ones that do that, okay? And everyone else is to fend for themselves. That's the way society is today, okay? Just in case that scripture that says God will provide our every need is wrong. So therefore, I will store up all I can just in case that scripture's wrong, okay? <laughs> so maybe we believe, but still our faith is sort of lacking in the ability of God Almighty. You know, God Almighty, the great creator, the one that created everything that you can see, hold, taste, smell, and feel right now. Yeah. That God. Okay, maybe we're not like that. You know, we're not storing up everything, you know, uh, believing that, uh, uh, you know, just in case God, that God thing's not real or, you know, that God's not going to provide for us. But, but what about the others? We are urged by uh, uh, the author of 1 Timothy chapter 2 that supplication, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. For everyone. And this means for everyone, not just people like us. You know, uh, I was talking to someone earlier this week, and uh, they were uh, talking about a uh, 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 something they had experienced in the past. Uh, another church somewhere, and, and uh, you know, church is good, folks. It really is. Yes, it is. However, uh, it's when we get in a way that you know, church people become something that's. Uh, not exactly what church is supposed to be. And, uh, you know, when they we take care of our own, but we forget about everyone else. You know, we, we need to pray when that happens, okay? So uh, I once asked a, a church that I was assigned a pastor to, to, to pray a fervent prayer for direction. And, and I think each and every one of us, each church should pray that. You know, if you want to know God's will for that particular congregation in the community they live, then we need to pray fervent prayers. Amen? And I asked them to pray that God will reveal what the body of believers should, should do in the community to show God's love to the world. Now that's not a bad request, is it? Isn't that what we're supposed to do anyway? Yes, amen. Well, they didn't. Some of them did, some of them didn't, all right? And, uh, uh, and that's okay. I felt that everyone should pray that prayer, or if they would pray that prayer, and have faith in doing so, that not only would God answer uh, that prayer for the congregation as a whole, but individually, people's eyes or their direction would be uh, uh, guided also, okay? In other words, not only for the congregation, but the individual would be revealed, okay? In other words, God will reveal each other's shortcomings. Where are our shortcomings at? You know, we've hardly ever prayed for God to reveal our shortcomings. You want to know why? Because then we'd have to face them. And we'd either have to ignore God or just, uh, uh, you know, we have to make change in our life. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. 
you know, those ones where we are placing other things before God, like the Israelites. Now, I know nobody here does that. But we should pray a prayer like that. God, reveal what it is that you would have us to do to show the, your love to everyone. Every, in our community, where we work, where we live, wherever we go. Reveal it to us, God. Reveal the weaknesses, the iniquities, or the shortcomings in my life. And we know that God's will is for every human being, that uh, uh, what it is, all right, that everyone be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. You know, God loves you. That there's one God, that there's one Savior, that there's one Holy Spirit, that that, uh, who are the three in one, the, the, the triune God, our Creator. We were in great need as a human race, folks. We were, and we still are. I shouldn't say were, we are, okay? But God supplied the need of grace that we require to mend the brokenness of our relationship with God. And it was the only way that our relationship could be mended. Because humanity messed it up. And we're continuing to mess it up because we put stipulations. But you understand that God provided the way. Money couldn't fix that relationship. Neither could uh, you nor I fix the relationship. We couldn't do it. And there isn't any physical, materialistic thing that could fix it. Except God Himself through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And then the resurrection of Christ, of course. So there you have it this morning. Well, we've read over and over where the Israelites, they got off track and by, by appeasing their lust for worldly things other than God. And, and it came at a great cost to them because God turned His back on them. And they felt the discomfort, or maybe uh, we should say the desolate condition that they were in. They eventually learned to return to God, to return their hearts, to turn their hearts toward God. Or at least for a little while, anyway, until they forgot again. We now have the Bible. That we can read about, you know, there's a, 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 uh, when our son was in school, he absolutely hated the subject of history, all right? And uh, uh, so what I do, I said, you know what, we read history in hopes that we don't make the same mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we got a Bible that does the same thing. Amen. We can read over and over in here of the mistakes of others, and we should know, folks, we should know. We should know. The Israelites didn't have it. They was living it, okay? It, uh, uh, we have the Bible that tells us the stories of our loving God. Our loving God demands to be trusted and placed number one in our lives. Number one above anyone else or anything else, all right? Our loving God who is, uh, 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 who was in the human form is Jesus Christ, shed His blood and gave His life on the cross so that we might accept His gift of grace because of our terrible need because of sin. So which God, are you, uh, uh, which God are you going to trust? Are you going to trust God Almighty? Or are you going to trace the God, uh, trust the gods of the world? There's many gods in this world, folks. There really is. There is. But there's only one true God. Amen? Amen. The many gods of, of the world that, that we come in contact with in our everyday life. Are you going to trust in them? Flip on the news and say, that looks pretty good. I'll follow that belief or whatever. Or are you going to trust God Almighty? Which one's it going to be? Only, you know, that's between you and God. That's not between you, me, and God. It's up to you to decide, not me and you. As it says in Luke chapter 16, verse 13, here's one verse, all right? It says, No slave can serve two masters, for the slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. 
You know, the Bible doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money. Amen? Right. Not like money, just like I like to buy things, <laughs> especially food. And I'd really like to buy that brand new red Corvette, but I just can't afford that. <laughs> and that's a little silly if you ask me to spend a house on a Corvette, all right? So it's up to each individual here today and in the world to determine there's only one God that leads to eternal life. Amen. Or you can choose the others which leads to eternal damnation. Yes. Simple as that. I don't believe that God, uh, and you can disagree with me on this if you want, but I don't believe that God punishes us today like He did the Israelites way back when uh, because of Christ, all right? But there is coming a day when each and every one of us will be required to stand before the throne, uh, judgment throne where Christ will be seated and we'll give account to our life. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you'll either be welcomed into the kingdom for all eternity or you'll be condemned to hell. Right then and there. So, based upon the findings, each one will then receive their eternal reward. Is it going to be a reward or is it going to be a punishment? I don't know. It's up to you. Amen? Amen. Which God are you going to choose to serve today? Only you. Nobody can force you either way. Amen? And amen. So let us think about that. You know, there is a lot going on in the world today. And, and, and I was thinking coming up the road, uh, down at the, the church down the road, it said, the sign said, praying for our country. There's nothing wrong with our country, folks. It's perfect because God created it, but it's the people that's in it that amen. we need to pray for, for God to get a hold of us. Amen? <laughs> think about it. It's the truth. It is. <laughs> It's the truth. So let, let us pray. Grace is God. We are thankful. We're thankful that uh, of your spirit that resides in us, that, that pricks our hearts, that turns uh, our eyes towards you. We just ask, God, that you help con continue to, to put you first in our life and that, God, you would reveal what it is you would have for us to do according to your will. We just pray, God, that each and every one of us would choose that relationship with you through Christ Jesus. And we just ask, God, that you use us in a mighty way for your glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.